Hi everyone, good morning students. This is Eva Mordi Guadalupe, your teacher in Environment Technology subject. Today, we will be having our new lesson to discuss, which is all about advanced technique in PowerPoint and advanced and complex formulas and computations. But before we start, let me present to you our learning targets. So this will be our learning targets in which by the end of this lesson you are expected to first use advanced tools and techniques in common productivity and software applications and in developing ICT content and second create an original or derivative ICT content of effectively communicate communicate or present data or information related to specific professional tracks. In advanced technique and PowerPoint, we have the following. First, we have animation and timing. Second, inserting hyperlinks in PowerPoint. And the last is embedded files and data. Okay, let us begin with the definition of PowerPoint. PowerPoint is a highly innovative and versatile program that can ensure a successful communication whether you're presenting in front of potential investors, a lecture theater, or simply in front of your colleagues. It means that it is a presentation program developed by Microsoft and is often used to create business presentations and it can also be used for informal or education purposes. Slides are comprised by the presentations which may contain text, images, and other media such as audio clips and movies. So meaning it is a complete pack package because it gives everything that we need to produce a professional looking presentation. Okay, a PowerPoint has a five features. First, we have adding smart art, inserting shapes. The third one is inserting an image. The fourth one, slide transitions and adding animations. Okay, that five features, all that features, okay, you can find that in in your in making your PowerPoint presentation. Next is animation. Animation is the process of making the illusion of motion and the illusion of change by means of the rapid succession of sequential images that minimally differ from each other. Okay, these are applied text or objects in your presentation that give visual effects including movement. Animation is useful especially we have important points to focus. We can use it to control the flow of information and to increase viewer interest in your presentation. Next, advanced techniques in PowerPoint is the animation and timing. Okay, when we say animation and timing, it is a Microsoft PowerPoint provides several animation styles in different categories namely the entrance, emphasis, exit, and motion paths. Animation make your presentation more dynamic. Similar to the timing features in slides transitions, it allow you to choose to advance each animation on clicked with previous or after previous. So this is the example of the animation and timing. Just do click the tab animation in the animation type and all the designs will be will appear. Okay, in other words, the timing animation refers to how long an action of your text presentation takes from beginning to end. When you can set an animation Okay, and when we say a timing, it creates movement in your presentation. You can set an animation effect to start when you click the mouse or in the coordination with other animation effects on the slide. On the slides, click the text or objects that contains the animation effect that you want to set the start for timing.
other is inserting hyper hyperlinks. A hyperlink, which is frequently stated to as linked, is a text or image on the screen that you can click on to jump to another file or within existing file. When you hover your pointer over a hyperlink, either it is a text or an image, the arrow changed to a small pointing hand called hyperlink cursor. Hyperlinks in PowerPoint allow you to sync to another slide in the current presentation, another slides in different presentation, another file or web page, or email address. Hyperlinks are primarily method used to navigate between pages and website. When text is used as a hyperlink, it is usually underlined and appears as a different color. Hyperlinks are a great way to connect your presentation to another slide, presentations, documents, and the web. Hyperlinks works only in slideshow view. When you add a hyperlink to a presentation, you must be careful that the target of your hyperlink is available. By the way, to insert a hyperlink to another style, slide rather, you must follow the following steps. First, right-click the selected text or image, then click hyperlink. Second, the insert hyperlink dialog box will appear. On the third, on the left side of the dialog box, click place in this document, creating a hyperlink to another slide. And last, a list of the other slides in your presentation will appear and click OK. okay. A multimedia file inserted into a web, web page just embedded files can be videos, music, or tables, or data. Okay. What is embedded file in data? Okay. When designing a web page, an embedded file refers to any type of multimedia file that you might insert or embed into a web page. This includes file like graphics and sound file. Embed embedded file refers to any type of multimedia file that you might insert or embed into a web page. So this includes files like graphics and sound file. You can embed one or more slides or you can embed the, an entire presentations. So when you embed a PowerPoint presentation object in your document, Word runs the PowerPoint slideshow when you double click the presentation object in the document. So the PowerPoint slideshow when you double click the presentation object in the document. Another Okay, now how to embed pictures? You must follow the following steps. First, Click the insert tab. Okay, we have pictures here. You can look at the picture so that you can follow immediately the, the steps. Second is select the object command. Third, click create from file. The fourth one is click the browse and locate the file you want to embed. The fifth one, click the link and click OK. So this so that's the end of the advanced technique in PowerPoint. Okay. Now I have a sample video here. It is about the PowerPoint presentation using the PowerPoint presentation to create an interactive storyboard. So this video is very helpful to your activity. Please do, do watch it carefully. That's the end of our discussion about advanced technique in PowerPoint. Let us now proceed to advanced and complex formulas and computation. So what it, what it is by the way? How does it help? So it is when you say advanced advanced and complex formulas and computation, it is a cell 
it is either in the left or in the middle or in the right function. So these advanced Excel functions can be co can can be combined to create some very advanced and complex formulas to use. The cell function can return a variety of information about the contents of a cell, such as its name, location, row column, and more. Okay, advanced complex calculation in, in Excel. Complex formula is the combination of more than two simple formulas. Okay, when I say e formula, it is, I uh, want to say advanced and complex calculation in Excel, the complex formula. A formula, it is an expression which calculates the value of a cell. So, again, what the complex formula, these are the combination of two, more than two simple formulas. One of the key features of Excel is the ability to calculate complex formula. So we have four basic computation used in Excel. We have the addition, the subtraction, multiplication, and the division. Okay, the Excel follows the PEMDAS. So operation in close in parenthesis, the P there stands for the parenthesis, following by the E, exp the exponent or the exponential calculation, such as 3 raised to 2 or 3 squared, for example. Okay, multiplication, the M and D stands for the multiplication and division, whichever come first, and the A and S stands for addition and subtraction, whichever come first. So we have here the anatomy of a formula. Okay, the equal sign here is the functions built in formulas okay the, have you seen the asterisk there asterisk it is an operator or the multiplication okay we have the a it a at eight rather it is a reference name of specific cell to use another operator the carrot it raises number to a power or the exponent we have the operator, the plus or the plus or addition, and the minus or the sub subtraction. So we have numbers there, the seven and one. That means it is constant. The values enter directly into the formula. Next is relative referenced. Okay, when we say relative reference, all well references are relative references. When copied, copied across multiple cells, they change based on the relative position of rows and, and columns. Okay, the referential or the relative, by default, all cell references are relative references as what I mentioned earlier. They change based on the relative position of rows and columns. So when copied across the multiple cells. So let's say for instance, if you copy the formula, the formula, the equal sign A1 plus B1 from the row 1, the row 2, the formula will become from row 1 to the row 2 rather, and the formula will become A2 plus B2. So in addition, Relative references are especially convenient whenever you need to repeat to repeat the same calculation across multiple rows or columns. Okay, another type of cell reference is absolute reference. The okay, absolute reference do not change based when copied or filled. You can use an absolute reference to keep a row and or column constant. So there may be a times when you do not want a cell reference to change when filling cells. Unlike relative references, absolute references do not change when copied or filled. Bear, bear in mind that you can use an absolute reference to keep a row and or column constant. So, an absolute reference, it is designated in a formula by the addition of a dollar signs before the column and row. If it precedes to the column or row, but not both, it's known as the mixed reference. So, you will use the relative A2 and absolute 
the dollar sign A and, and then the dollar sign to formats in the most formulas. Mixed references are used less frequently. So we have here again as what I've said, the absolute reference it is it is designated or by the additional of the dollar signs. So we have here the dollar sign A, then dollar sign 2, which means the column and row do not change when copied. So A, which is the, at, at the center is the dollar sign, the A, at the center of the A and 2 is the dollar sign, that meaning is the row does not change when copied. And dollar sign A2, the column does not change when, when copied. So this will be the example pictures. So the, again, there are two types of cell references, the relative and absolute. Then, are both behave differently when co when copied and filled to the to their cell. Okay, the relative references change when a formula is copied to another cell, while the absolute references, on the other hand, remain constant no matter where they are copied. So we have here the relative cells, the absolute cells. Okay, just do focus on the formula. That's our, that are the example and the mixed cell reference. Okay, we are now on functions in cell. When you say function, it is a predefined formula that performs calculation using specific values in a particular order. So functions, these are predefined formulas and are already available in Excel. For example, the cell A3 contains a formula which adds the value of the cell A2 to the value of the cell, cell A1. So it will become the, the equal sign A1 plus A2, the formula. So we have here function library, just to look the pictures, we have formulas there. Okay, we have, next we have commonly used function. In the left sides of the table, function is, is the function. And on the other hand, in the right side will be its purpose. Okay, we have the equal first. We have equal sum, meaning its purpose is to calculate the sum of the values of the range of cells. Second, the equal average, it ca meaning the, its purpose is to calculate the arithmetic mean of range of cells or values okay third function is equal max meaning or its purpose to give the maximum value in the range of the cell or values the equal mean its purpose is to give a minimum values in a range of cell or values the another function is equal count the purpose is to count the number of cell in the range of cells or values and last one commonly used function is the equal if it shows a series of calculation using the same formula but a different value for each calculation to determine whether the formula is true or false so other specialized function we have the look at and reference function the v look up the VLOOKUP, it searches the first column of a table array and returns a value from the same row in the column indicated by call, index, or number. We have also HLOOKUP, so, or the horizontal lookup. It searches the first row of table array and returns a value from the same column in the row indicated by row, index, or or numbers so don't get confused by the two when we say v lookup or the vertical lookup the first column of a table it is the first column of a table array while the each lookup or the horizontal lookup it is the first row of a table array it stands for horizontal lookup it is a function that makes excel search for a certain value in a row we have also rows this returns the number of rows in specified range. Okay, formulas and functions can be entered directly into a cell or into a formula bar. Just to take the take 
take closely uh, take look out closely to the picture so you can uh, you can enter formula in a formula bar or enter a formula directly into the cell which okay Again, you can enter the formula and functions either in the formula bar above or directly into the, cer into the cell below. So, how to create formulas? The equal functions and cells. Okay, just do type in the formula bar above the equal sign followed by the function you want to enter and then create a parenthesis or any cell formula inside the parenthesis or the, the cells. So we have function formula in the cell formula that we are going to use in the set in our Excel. We have the sum, just do the sum. First we have to write the equal sign, then sum followed by the parenthesis. We have also average. Okay, you just do write the equal sign. Don't forget to write the equal sign before the function formula. So we have also today, the equal sign today, and then parenthesis, then consentinate or the equal consent, then the parenthesis. For the cell formula, we can use comma, which means separated cells. We can also use colon, which range of consecutive cells. The parenthesis or the bracket meaning the enclosure of a cell bracket or phrases and we can also use the operations the multiplications subtraction division or addition which is the basic operations So we have the function formula. So if you want to use if you want to use the sum, just enter equal sign the sum then the cell. Now how to use the basic function in an easy way. So we have the steps, just do follow the steps. We have also pictures so that you can you can follow the steps easily. First, we have to create a table with the rows and columns of data. Second, you have to select all the desired cell. Fourth, go to the home or formula tab, find the auto sum command. And fourth, click the drop down arrow and then select the desired function. Okay, okay how to use basic function in a less easy way? Earlier we followed this. We do, we I, I presented the steps in an easy way. Now we are on the less easy way. First, first steps is you have uh, first step rather you have to create the table with rows and columns of data. Then second, select the desired cell where you want the result would be. The third is type the function formula in the desired cell or on the for formula bar. Then, last is press enter on the keyboard. Okay, we have advanced function, the if function. Now, how to use the if function? If function. So, first, we have also the steps to follow. First, you have to create the table with rows and columns of data. Second, determine the if criteria or conditions. So we have here the criteria from 0 to 74 is failed and 75 to 100 passed. And then third is, okay, oh by the way, this is the if function in how to create a grade, grade assessment in the remarks. The third is you have to select the desired cell, cell to put the results in. Okay, the fourth one is go to the home or formula tab find the auto sum auto sum command then click the more functions the six steps you have to search you have to search for the functions the if in the dialog box and select the if function then click ok ok just like this you have you have to 
place there the logical text which is for example the b12 the value if intrus so the value if true meaning passed and the value if false meaning if failed so it checks whether the condition is met and return to one value if true and another value if false so you then the logical test is any value or expression that can be evaluated to true or false so just do click ok so in the logical text box again type the desired criterion cell the greater than equal the numerical value for example is the a1 greater than equal d75 so you have to enter the return value in if true and if false text boxes meaning the if true again is passed for the if false is for the fail then click ok so this will be the result okay this is now the formula you you enter the f function formula we have the reference the cell reference the 75 there is our criterion then the returned values the past and the failed so this will be the result now for the grade assessment in remarks so we have feliciano who got failed in the grade in the remarks because he he or she has only 74 she got only 74 rather he got rather Now let us proceed to the VLOOKUP. The VLOOKUP function performs a vertical lookup by searching a fo for a value in the first column of a table and returning the value in the same row in the index number position. Okay, the VLOOKUP stands for the vertical lookup. It is a function that makes Excel search for a certain value in a column, the so-called table array. So in order to return a value return a value from a different column in the same row, the VLOOKUP function performs a vertical lookup by searching for a value in the first column of a table and returning the value in the same row in the index or number table and returning the value in the same row in the oh, again in the index or number table Position. So, when you need to extract data from a table based on a particular position or based on a particular value, so you can use the VLOOKUP to do that. So, in simple terms, it looks at the table in the first column for a specific value and returns a cell, returns a cell in the same row where you choose the column to return from, from so we have the syntax here the equal the lookup or the function cell the lookup the value ta value table array the call index number range lookup or we have here the example so we have here the function and and inside the parenthesis is the cell okay equal just do write the equal sign then after the equal signs the will look up and then the parenthesis we have here the sample example the e1 then a2 and the b6 then 2 or default so our e1 is the look up this value and the range is our a2 is to b6 and then return the match from this column the 2 then search for the exact match or default true or false now in we have the steps to follow in the lookup first again you have to identify a column of a cells you'd like to fill with new data in this case that is column d entitled the mm the mri just do look at the pictures and you have to select function the f of x is greater than the vlookup and then insert the formula into your highlighted cell the third steps enter the lookup value for which you want to retrieve new data for example the brian colby the first criteria is your lookup value this is the value of your 
spreadsheets that has data associated with it which you want Excel to find and return for you. To enter it, click on the cell that carries a value you're trying to find a match for. In our example shown above, it's in the cell A2, you'll start the migrating of your new data into D2. Since this cell represents the MRR of the customer name listed in A2. Okay. The fourth step, you have to enter the table array of the spreadsheet where your desired data is located. Next to the table array field, enter the range of cells you'd like to search and the sheet where the cells are located. Using the format shown in the screenshots above, the entry above means the data we're looking for is in a spreadsheet titled Pages and can be found anywhere between the column B and B column K. Okay, for the next steps, you have to enter the column number of the data you want the Excel to return. Beneath the table array field, you'll enter the column index number of the table array you're searching through. For example, if you're focusing on the column B through K, notated by the B is to key. When entered in the table array field, but the specific value you want are in the column K, you'll enter the 10 in the 28 column indexed number field since the column K is the 10th column from the left. Then you have to enter your range lookup to find an exact or appropriate match of your lookup value. So in the given example, which concerns monthly revenue, you want to find an exact matches from the table you're searching through. So to do this, enter the false in the range lookup field. This tells Excel's, Excel you want to find only the exact revenue associated with each sales contact. However, if you want Excel to look up to look for an appropriate match instead of an exact match, to do so, simply enter the true instead of false in the fourth field shown above. And for the next steps, just do click done or enter and then and fill your new column. So that's the end of our lesson. Do you have questions? If none, go to the e-learning path at the www.guide.com. You can review there our lesson. And then I also prepared an activity there. And if you have questions with regards to our activity, you can contact me with these numbers or 9085090244. You can message or call me anytime. Thank you for listening and God bless everyone.